I'm James Wayman. I'm, uh, my title at uh, San Jose State University in the U.S. is Senior Fellow. I'm in the Office of Research uh, in the Vice President's Office. Uh, I also hold the title of Honorary Professor at University of Kent in Canterbury. My fundamental area when I received my PhD was in acoustics and then it became digital signal processing because I was right at the era when these new digital signal processing capabilities were coming around and I had a good background in mathematics. So I uh, got very quickly into the area of speaker recognition and I developed algorithms for speaker recognition and then I got very interested and concerned with the concept of testing authentication technologies based on biometrics. And when I use the word biometrics, I mean automated methods of recognizing people. And so uh, uh, I became uh, quite interested in testing, testing methodologies, testing standards. I went to work for the British government in 2000. I continue with them now for 15 years uh, in the area of standardization of automated human recognition technologies. Uh, the title of my talk is HALT, uh, Who Goes There? I'm not going to be talking only about biometric identification. I'm also going to be talking about authentication technologies in general. What do we mean by authentication technologies? Authenticate means to prove the truth of some claim. And we generally use it in a context where we're trying to prove the truth of an authorization to access maybe a bank account, or maybe to access a physical facility, or maybe to access some information. So how do we authenticate a claim that I am authorized to access information or access a physical facility. A lot of ways to do it. Biometrics is just one way, and not necessarily the best way in every uh, circumstance. Uh, we have to mix and match our authorization technologies to meet the requirements of each particular situation. Biometrics is not always the solution. And in some fact, cases it's proven not to have been the solution. Well, I work primarily with governments, and governments are interested in authentication technologies right now at the moment in border crossing applications more than anything else. There was talk about uh, uh, e-government activities. You remember in the UK we worked for a number of years from about 2004 to 2008 on the National ID scheme. Um, that scheme has been dropped and I would say worldwide governments are most interested in authentication when it comes to border crossing. And that's one area that biometrics is actually working. It's actually been used. For instance, uh, next time you go to the UK, you'll probably go through the e-channel. Do, do you carry a British passport? Yeah. You probably go through the e-channel where your face is recognized. You don't need to talk to anyone there. All of this is done automatically. Uh, these systems also are in place in Australia. You would be el eligible them, yeah. to, to use, a situa uh, use such a uh, system next time you go to Australia. Um, Germany has a, a system, similar system. Portugal has similar systems. Finland has similar systems. Um, the system in the United States is not based on the face that's embedded in the passport. It's based on fingerprinting and you have to sign up in advance for that system. So the U.S. is a little bit of an outlier. But the way that governments are primarily going is to take the facial image that's on the passport already, to read it off the passport, and then to match that image to the image of the person that carries the passport through the kiosk. And that's where I think the, the big excitement is uh, these days in biometrics, and that's where an awful lot of money is being spent. Every government has taken this on in a slightly different way. Uh, several of the European governments have decided to include not only facial images, but fingerprints on the passports. And you may recall the UK national ID scheme. The idea, at first at least, was to use facial images, fingerprints, and iris images in creating the national ID card. Uh, that situation, that, that proposal met with lots of uh, political pushback, and in fact was canceled when the conservatives came to uh, power when they uh, campaigned on the promise to do away with the national ID card scheme. So what we see is that every country tries to do this in a different way because every country has different uh, sensibilities, really. And in the UK, the whole concept of an ID card protected by biometric information simply didn't fly. It didn't bear a political test. In the United States, uh, we are only willing to put facial images on passports. We are not willing to put fingerprints on passports. But fingerprints on passports are, are big in Europe. Um, the French, for instance, uh, the Dutch, and I believe the Germans are all putting fingerprints on passports. Not the same fingerprints, mind you, and they can't read each other's fingerprints, but for their own citizens, they're putting fingerprints as well as facial images on the passport. Well, I, I don't know uh, how much research I'm doing anymore. I'm working primarily with governments. I'm working with the British government on the development of standards for automated human recognition. I'm working for the Australian government. Uh, in uh, uh, The Australian government now has not only the incoming system, which is called SmartGate, 
they have an outgoing system that they're just starting to trial up at Brisbane Airport, very, very exciting. Uh, they're calling that for the time being e-channel, but it will be called outward uh, processing smart gate. I hope I'm not revealing anything I'm not supposed to. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> In the near future. So these are real exciting because going into Australia or coming out of Australia, you no longer have to talk to any immigration official. Your passport is red, your facial image is mass matched to the image on the passport, and if the two match, it is assumed that you're carrying a passport that belongs to you, and, and all of the necessary uh, passenger processing records are updated to indicate that you've either come into the country or gone out of the country. Uh, New Zealand has a very, very similar system um, that, that they came along with a bit later than the Australians, I might say, but they've come along with it. Um, uh, U.S. government, I'm going to be talking about a little bit about what the U.S. government has done lately in my talk today. The U.S. government's been experimenting with um, recognition on the move. Uh, biometric authentication systems that do not require the uh, data subject to stop. The data subject just keeps right on moving. These other systems that I talked about, you have to go to a, a, a gate or stop at a kiosk and there'll be a gate that closes and will open only when you're recognized. In the United States, there's been some experimentation, a little bit, not much, but some experimentation with systems that do not require any stoppage by the data subject.